The Maikai first opened on December 20th, 1956, and the menu featured 43 cocktails from master bartender Mariano Liquidini. Liquidini's cocktails were greatly influenced by the cocktails of Don the Beachcomber because he had started at Don the Beachcomber's in the late 1930s, and he was sent to Chicago to open the Don the Beachcomber's there in the 1940s. After 16 years of working for the Don the Beachcomber restaurants, Jack and Bob Thornton recruited Liquidini to open the Maikai in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Don the Beachcomber and Trader Vic both created cocktails and should be remembered for that, but they were also the owners, the operators, or the restaurateurs, if you will, of their bars and their empires. But when you look at a bartender, like a true bartender, mixologist, or whatever you want to call it, someone who started behind the bar and then worked their way up in the tropical and tiki world, Liquidini is one of a small handful of bartenders to achieve notoriety and create a real lasting legacy. Of those original 43 cocktails on the menu, at least 32 of them were inspired by Don the Beachcomber drinks. Famous drinks like the 151 Swizzle, the Jet Pilot, the Barrel O' Rum, the Deep Sea Diver, and many, many more. Many of which have names that are closely related to the original Don the Beachcomber drinks, but one that has been a little bit forgotten is the Zula Number no. 1. That was on the menu in 1956, and there were two versions, the number one served in a tall Collins style glass, and then the number two that was served in a coupe. The Mai Kai's recipes are, for the most part, a secret. Outside of the Munkus coconut being printed back in the 1950s, most everything else is still a mystery today. For decades, the Zula number no. one and Zula number no. two were simply Mai Kai cocktails on the menu with no history, backstory, or connection to Don the Beachcombers, but when Jeff Berry released Sip and Safari in 2007. It featured the recipe for a cocktail that was on the menu at Don the Beachcombers called the Penang Aphrodite No. 1. That drink included rum, pineapple juice, orange juice, passion fruit syrup, lime juice, and Pernod. The recipe is from 1937 and according to Beach Bum, was an unpublished recipe from the notebook of Dick Santiago, and the original version was called the Penang Punch. There also just happened to be a Penang Aphrodite number no. two, which was the same drink, but just cut in half. Now it wasn't immediately known to all that the Penang Aphrodite and the Zula were connected, but some internet sleuths on Tiki Central put the pieces together, and then Jim Hurricane Hayward wrote about it when he pieced together that the number one and number two versions of these two separate cocktails were probably connected. Not only did Jim write up an extensive overview of this on Atomic Grog, which you should check out, but he prompted me to create this video by sharing with me that story and then pointing me to the further evolution of this drink as the latest version of the Penang Aphrodite shows up in the Tropical Standard Book as a Penang Punch. That means the drink was created in the late 1930s by Don the Beachcomber, revised by Mariana Liquidini in the 1950s, and then reimagined by Garrett Richard in the 2020s. The Mai Kai's method for incorporating mint into mini drinks is to gently muddle the mint in the glass. The original from Don the Beachcomber did not do this, but the tropical standard version adopts the muddled mint technique that you can find at the Mai Kai. So let's make all three of these right now together, and then I'll try them all at the same time and I will tell you which one I think is best. The Tropical Standard Version calls for one and a half ounces of English Harbor Five Year Rum, which is a calm still rum from Antigua, and I don't have it, so I'm subbing in Chairman's Reserve instead for this one. So let's start where it all started with the Penang Aphrodite from Sip and Safari. We're gonna build this in a drink mixer tin with six drops of Pernod, quarter ounce of fresh lime juice, half an ounce of pineapple juice, half an ounce of orange juice, half an ounce of passion fruit syrup, one and a half ounces of a white Puerto Rican style rum, and one and a half ounces of an amber Virgin Islands rum. There you go, the Penang Aphrodite number one, or the Penang Punch. All right, let's move straight to the Mai Kai's Zula number one, and this is a tribute recipe by the Atomic Grog. 
We're gonna start with three sprigs of fresh mint into our Collins glass. We're gonna gently muddle it. Add in one cup of crushed or nugget ice, and then we're gonna set this aside. We're gonna build the rest of this drink in a drink mixer tin, starting with three drops of Pernod, eighth an ounce of Falernum, I'm just guessing here and doing about half of a quarter of an ounce, half an ounce of a rich simple syrup, half an ounce of orange juice, half an ounce of lime juice, one and a half ounces of pineapple juice, one and a half ounces of a light rum, and one and a half ounces of an aged Jamaican rum. The Mai Kai calls for no garnish, but this is on TV, so let's add some mint. So there you go, the Zula number one from the Mai Kai. And last but not least, we're moving on to the tropical standard Penang Punch. Start with eight to 10 mint leaves and add them to your glass and gently muddle them. Next, in a drink mixer tin, you're gonna add five drops of the saline solution, quarter ounce of lime juice, half an ounce of passion fruit puree, half an ounce of strained pineapple juice, half an ounce of orange juice, half an ounce of a cane syrup, one teaspoon of absinthe, one and a half ounces of a rum barbancourt white, and one and a half ounces of English Harbor five year, but I'm subbing in chairman's instead. punch from Tropical Standard. All right, a lot of drinks to try here, so let's get started with the original Penang Aphrodite or Penang Punch from Don the Beachcomber. It's my first time having uh, any of these, and, you know, right away, it's pretty light. I mean, considering how much rum we put in there, three ounces of rum, half of it's light Puerto Rican style, the other half I used three ounces of uh, a Crujan uh, barrel aid, so still lighter than most, but really light, fresh, not as rum forward as I would have thought it would be, not as intense, but the passion fruit syrup definitely stands out and it's not super tart. All right, let's go on to the Atomic Grog's tribute to the Zula number one. The biggest difference right away is the mint. There's this like, herbaceous note to it that's lacking from the Don the Beachcomber one. And the Don the Beachcomber one, I don't even know if you're supposed to really garnish it with mint, but you're not really getting much mint from just the garnish. In this one, we muddled it in, so it's not just getting the mint oils, but you're getting kind of more of that like vegetal herb note, but it's not too much. And there's a little bit of a bitterness here. And this one on paper, you might think it, it with the rich, simple syrup that it looks like it might be too sweet. It's really not at all. I think the the mint in here adds that bitter note to it, and that's kind of needing a little bit more of the sweetness that's added in here. And finally, let's try the Penang Punch from Tropical Standard. The absinthe flavor is much stronger here than it is in the Pernod and the other two, and it, it it's a little bit reminiscent of the Languid Bell by combining the, that one had the wintergreen oil and the absinthe, and here we have the mint oils and absinthe, and it, it just has this old-timey licorice kind of flavor, but this is a lot more subdued than the Languid Bell. You get touches of the grassiness from our Rum Barbancourt White. So they're all three unique and different and, and can really each stand on their own. And, you know, I thought about this episode for a long time. I already knew I was gonna call it kind of the evolution of a cocktail. And I had that in my mind. So it, it's hard to, to be unbiased here, but there is a progression here. And, you know, when I 
was tasting the first on the Beachcomber one, it just had this unique freshness to it. And uh, that's without me thinking about the other cocktails and what's in them. And the flavors that I was kind of picking up and thinking about were more in line with like a fresh sugar cane juice rum or a cane syrup. And then that's kind of where we end up with the rum barbancourt, with, you know, absinthe providing more of that freshness, that that fresh sugar cane flavor that you get from a cane syrup that you get from uh, cachaça or a clarin, or you get from something like a rum barbacore. Now it's not as far obviously as like a clarin and uh, a cachaça, but so it is just this strange thing where you, if you were to make these, you would you would see that. Now I'm not, I'm not saying that the fully evolved is better than the original or better than, you know, the Mai Kai's version, but after tasting all three of these, I mean, it's absolutely clear to me that my favorite, and I think the very best one here is obviously. And that's surprising to me because I thought the other two would probably be my favorite, but that's why you have to taste them to find out. So that's it for this one. This is the evolution of a tiki cocktail from the Hanong Aphrodite to the Zula number one to the Hanong Punch. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like below. Consider subscribing to this channel. If you want to support this channel more, check out the Patreon page for behind the scenes stuff. And otherwise, I'll see you on the next one. Sing. Nobody sing.